All right, so let's kick off Python. Um, the first thing we're going to do is we need to create the, the folder structure that we're going to use to save and, and do all of our projects um, with. So just on your desktop, create a new folder like this, and we'll just call it our Python unit. Um, inside that folder, we want to create more folders. So I'm just going to open it up and go here. My first folder, um, I'm just going to call it packet1. Uh, so just like in previous units, we're going to go um, kind of the packet model. Um, I'm going to create another one called packet2. And you can do this all the way until, um, until as many packets uh, I have on my, my website. All right? So there you go. So I have one, two, three, and you can keep going if you want to. Um, we're going to start with packet1. So if you go inside packet1, basically we're going to be doing two things. Um, the first thing that we're going to be doing is there's going to be some lecture videos like this one. Um, and so we're going to want to, to say videos like this, the coding that you're going to do, inside of um, our lectures folder um, inside of Packet1. Uh, a lot of the times the, the, the games that you'll be asked to make um, are going to be based on these ones. Um, so it'll be like a really good starting point. Um, but mostly, well, I say it's about half and half. Um, the other half of the time, they're just telling you exactly what you need to know um, uh, for the games, but maybe in, in a little bit different way. Um, but either way, save all of those lectures inside this lecture folder. Uh, the next folder we need is the challenge problems. So the challenge problems is the only thing that you're going to uh, be turning into me. Um, so you can put like your last name, you don't want to put none or challenge problems, but you can say um, your last name challenge problems. So, you know, Williams or whatever your last name is. Um, and you can even put um, like packet one. Uh, that way when you send it in to me, I know exactly um, what it is. Okay, so let's open up, um, now that we have that, let's open up uh, a, uh, a file. We're going to use Notepad++ um, to code with. Notepad++. Um, nope. All right, cool. All right, so what we're going to do is First thing we gotta save it, and just like HTML and CSS, there's a very specific way to save it, so the computer knows how to interpret it, right? Because it's, otherwise, it's just a whole bunch of text coming at it, and it doesn't know if it's supposed to become a website um, or a Python program or whatever. Um, so we're gonna help it out, and the extension that we're gonna save it with um, is gonna make all the difference. So I'm gonna go save as. So on my desktop, inside a Python unit, inside a packet one, inside of lectures. There we go. This is where I want to save it. And I'm going to call this food.py. So that .py is just like .html or .css. That's what tells the computer what kind of file it is. Cool. Um, the next thing I really want to uh, have you check for real quick is if you click on this plugins thing right here. So if you click on plugins, uh, the PYMPP, um, if you look at that, uh, if you don't have that, then immediately stop what you're doing and uh, come see me. Uh, I'll help you find it. Um, I may have to download some things on your computer. Um, but if you don't have that, then you can't do what we need to do. So anyway, now we have it. Um, we're good. All right, so let's uh, let's go to our first line um, of code here. So I'm gonna do uh, I'm gonna do this. Um, let's say uh, print. Hello world. Right, so uh, I printed up hello world um, and now I want to run it. So the way to run it is you go to that plugin spot and that PYNPP um, right here. See where it says Alt Shift F5? Um, that's what I want to run it in. Um, before I do that though, you see how up here how it's a little red floppy disk? Um, that means that I have unsaved work. So I could go here and I could go file and save or save as every single time, but you see how the shortcuts control S? We're gonna be saving and running this so much, it's best just to learn the, the keyboard shortcuts. So I'm gonna click Control S, uh, and now you see that it's turned blue, so that means I don't have any unsaved work. Um, same thing with me actually running the program. Uh, if you look at it, it says run, uh, run file in Python Interactive. Cool, awesome, um, I, that's the one I wanna use. If I just run it in Python, see what happened? It, it runs, but it just like closes automatically, it's too quick. Um, but if you run in Python Interactive, boom, here you go. It says, hello world, it prints off, and it's all good. Um, you also notice that it also has a, um, 
a little shortcut, Alt Shift F5. And since we're gonna be saving and running these things so much, it's just another keyboard shortcut you absolutely have to know. Um, Alt Shift F5 and it just runs um, and we can check our work. Okay, so we're going to uh, start a program off here. I'm just gonna say, hello, awesome. Uh, I'm gonna click enter a couple times and get to my next line of code. Um, I'll zoom in a little bit for you. So now everything that I type, I would, I would definitely have you be typing, right? So I'm gonna print this. Um, print just means it's gonna display for the user. Um, I'm gonna say, uh, what is your favorite food? So when I click this, it's gonna ask me what's my favorite food, and then I get this like little like three little arrow signs, um, and it looks like I can type like I could say like, uh, like pineapples, my man. Um, the problem is, it looks like I can type, but really the program's already run. Um, so these three little lines means like the program's already gone all the way through, um, and I'm outside of it. So I can't ask a question just with a print. Uh, I want to change this to become an input. Um, so now you look at look at the difference between that. Now when I'm typing, see I'm typing right there. Um, so if I said uh, I like um, Doritos, um, everything's everything's good. Uh, one thing I want to change. See how I just started typing right after that exclamation point. You can change that by just adding a little space there. So now when I run it, see how now it's just a little bit uh, it's a little bit nicer. That's one thing. The second thing is I got that information of Doritos, um, but if I wanted to use it again, uh, I wouldn't be able to. So what I want to do is I want to do is user fave food. That's too long. I'm just going to put fave food. Um, so what I did uh, right there with this equal sign um, and fave food is I created my first variable, right? So variables are a way of storing information. Um, and so like in a game, if you had lives, like lives could be a variable, um, something that you can store and then you can change um, throughout. So when the user inputs what's your favorite food right there, um, we'll store it right there. So if they say pickles, now fave food is gonna be pickles. So you watch what happens. Um, I'm gonna print that off and I'm gonna print off fave food right back at them. Um, I'm gonna go run in PYNP. Boom. What's your favorite food? And I'm gonna say uh, pickle sandwich. And boom, it prints it off. Now you'll notice that the first time that I did print, I did the two quotation marks. And that says basically print off everything that's inside of that. Um, here, I didn't use the uh, quotation marks because I was just printing off of the variable, whatever the variable was. If I add the quotation marks, what that's saying is it's literally going to print off the letters F-A-V-F-O-O-D, right? Um, no matter what I run. So you'll see, like, if I say favorite food and I say ice cream, it's going to just print off fave food. Um, so let's actually print off a, a, a good message there. Um, let's print off uh, and say, like, okay, so next time I have... So I put in these curly Q brackets, and these curly Q brackets are super uh, essential. Basically, that's somewhere where I can insert some information. And I want to put in whatever they said back. I want to put fave food right in there. So the way that I'm going to do that is after the quotation marks, I'm going to put dot format, and I'm going to put fave food. A um, couple of things to kind of watch out for. So you see how I have um, this set of parentheses closes down there. This set of parentheses no longer has uh, a place where it closes down. I'm gonna just put that right there. Um, so now I'll close down. Uh, so you should always have the matching number. Um, the second thing is a lot of times people put like favorite food, um, something, like, something like that, right? And it's not going to, it's not gonna work out, right? Um, because you called it fave food up here and favorite food down here. And so one quick way to check it out is if you uh, double click, that one should highlight too. So if I do it correctly, um, if I double click that one, that should highlight that they're spelled the same way. So like if you accidentally forget like an O and are wondering why the thing doesn't work, if you double click it, the other one should, um, 
should, uh, or, and, and every time that you say it throughout your entire program, uh, it'll light up. So you can find the misspellings easier. Um, so yeah, awesome. Let's see if this works. Bam. What's your favorite food? Uh, I like pork chops. Okay. So next time I have pork chops, I'll have you over. Um, so we're kind of inputting and, um, and outputting some information now. Um, now this idea can extend a little bit. I'm just going to copy and paste this down here. And I'm going to do favorite drink. And I'm going to say, what is your favorite drink? Okay. So now I want to say next time I'm having this and this, I will have you over. So if I just run it right now, we're gonna get a really common error. Um, so I say, what's your favorite food? I say, pork chops, obviously. What's your favorite uh, thing to drink? Uh, pork chop smoothie. Um, we're gonna get this error. Now, one of the cool things about Python is the errors are really nice. Um, they tell me line five right here. Um, and so I know exactly where it's at. The, the error is line five. And it says tuple index out of range. Um, so what was happening in line five, um, and, and you'll get to know that error. Um, well, hopefully not, uh, but you, you may. Um, in line five, what was happening was I have two spots where they're expecting something to be dropped in, and I only put one in there. So what I got to do is I got to do a comma here and then do fav drink. Um, and let me just um, let me just zoom out a little bit so it's all in one. So now it'll put fav food in the first one and fave drink in the second one. So if you wanted the fave food to show up over and over again, um, you know, like if you were got the, the user's name um, and you wanted to show up like seven times, you would have to have it seven times over, over here as well, right? And so whatever's in here has to match up with however many of those you have um, in your program. So let's check it out. What's your favorite food? Uh, I like bean burgers. Um, and uh, favorite drink, let's just say Coke, like Coca-Cola. Okay, yeah, works fine. All right, um, we'll add in a little more uh, complex stuff later, but that's kind of a, a, good, a good start, I think.